Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. And today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T490 for use in 2024 and onward. Just as a quick PSA, you'll notice that this is a bed sheet. We don't have the laptop sitting directly on it. There's actually a little SSD box underneath just to provide airflow for the CPU. So to recap, we do not recommend that you put your laptop directly on top of bed sheets. For the purpose of this video, we'll be mainly focusing on hardware specs, everyday use, video editing, and gaming, so stay tuned for that. This particular version of the T490 has a Intel Core i5-8265U CPU with 4 cores and 8 threads. This version of the i5 has Intel UHD 620 graphics, and there's 16GB of DDR4 2400MHz RAM installed. 8GB of that is soldered onto the motherboard, and there's a single 8GB stick installed. A Full HD 1920x1080 display panel, a Intel Wireless AC9560 Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth 5.1. For storage, there's a 256GB SK Hynix NVMe solid state drive. The same old 720p webcam. The keyboard is typical of this generation of ThinkPads, 6 row spill resistant. And unfortunately, this version does not have a back LED light. But of course, you can always order a replacement if you wish to have one. There's a Mylar Surface multi-touch touchpad with three buttons up here, which is quite nice. And there's the characteristic red track point, which you can further use those three buttons for navigation. Now, some of the touchpads coming to me will be slightly worn out, so I might be experimenting with some touchpad stickers or full out replacing them from sellers on eBay or AliExpress. Though do note that results may vary and definitely keep your receipts. For input and output, there's a slot for an optional smart card reader, which this model unfortunately does not have. There's a USB 3.1 Gen 1 always on, air exhaust for the CPU fan, RJ45 Ethernet port, and the version of the Kensington lock. Onto the other side, there's a micro SD card reader, microphone and headphone input, HDMI one. Now on the bottom surface of the laptop, we have air intake for the CPU fan, and what I'm guessing is some passive ventilation here and here. And we also have little holes right here, here, and here. I'm going to guess that's for the spill resistant keyboard. If you do happen to spill water or some other liquid, perhaps this is where it leaks out in an effort to save the motherboard. If that's incorrect, let me know in the comments below. Now, before we open up the bottom of the laptop to take a look at the motherboard, you want to power on the system and get into BIOS. And you do that by powering on and hitting the enter key. If hitting the enter key doesn't work and your system boots right to Windows, here's one thing that you can do in order to adjust that. So you hit the Windows key and you can type control panel. Once inside, we navigate to hardware and sound, power options. Over here on the left side, choose what the power buttons do. Change settings that are currently unavailable. Uncheck, turn on fast startup, save changes, and shut down. Now we're back to hitting the enter key when you see the splash screen. When you're greeted by this menu, you can hit F1 to enter BIOS. Once in the system BIOS, we navigate over to the config section, power, and scroll down to disable built-in battery, and we hit yes. Now we're ready to open up the laptop without worrying about shorting out the components. To remove the back panel, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Let's get started. Now something like a plastic guitar pick can be used to score the palm rest and not worry about marking up the surface. Here we have the internal 50 watt hour battery. Underneath this little black flap is the spot to install your extra RAM. Here's a slot for your NVMe solid state drive. Up here we have a heat pipe for the CPU leading to the CPU fan. In order to replace the thermal paste, you just need to release these four screws, clean it off maybe with some alcohol solution. I've already done this, so I'm not going to demonstrate it, maybe in a future video. Here we have the Wi-Fi card, which is soldered to the motherboard. Now this is arguably good for the current times and arguably bad for further in the future, but time will tell. I say this because I judge this this may reduce latency and connections, but also not provide an upgrade option. Underneath this little black flap is the spot for the WWAN card. Now that is an M.2 port, 
and I'm finding conflicting information on whether or not it supports a M.2 SATA 3 SSD. What I'm going to do is just take a moment to install it and then we'll boot into Windows and see if it pops up. Now booted into the system BIOS here, we can see NVMe 0 as the SK Hynix SSD and there's an unmarked NVMe 1. Let's see if that shows up anywhere else. We can see here that it definitely does not show up in the boot menu. So we are booted back into, fortunately the SSD does not seem to be showing up either in file manager or disk partition in command prompt. I think I'm going to lay this to rest and maybe check out more what the community has to say. Please let me know in the comments if you know anything more. So you can see on the product specifications, it's not actually listed that M.2 SSDs are supported in the WWAN port. However, there does seem to be discourse on Reddit with varying conclusions, so please let me know in the comments if it worked. So that about wraps up the basic tour of the motherboard. Of course, there's a lot more to talk about, but I don't want to get too technical. Uh, the most I'll probably do in another video is demonstrate how to install a new touchpad. So now it's time to capture some gameplay footage and to do this I'll be using the capture card in my workstation and connecting to the HDMI port on the T490. I've got Epic Games installed and I also have my Steam SSD over here which I'll be connecting with a USB Type-C connection. So the HDMI cable is connected. Looks like we're ready to start capturing some footage so here comes the montage. Now onto the video editing, I installed DaVinci Resolve free version and if you're just chopping up footage, it actually performs pretty well. So I have about 11 minutes of 1080p footage lined up. Let's see how long it takes to render. So that took 17 minutes and 51 seconds to render. And honestly, for the price of a T490, that's really not that bad. For the casual user, I think that's totally acceptable especially if you're sticking to a budget. Everyday home and work use I think is where the T490 really shines, especially in comparison to other ThinkPads, starting from the T470 and down. The utilization of the 4-core 8-thread i5 is really great. You can get to searching up images fairly fast, watch 1080p videos, stream Netflix, etc. And using software like Microsoft Office 2021 or Microsoft uh, Office 365 comes with ease. And I can easily say that I would be totally comfortable using this as a daily driver. So would I recommend the T490 for use in 2024 and onward? Absolutely. I would happily use this as my daily driver laptop as I just stated. If you're currently using AT490, please leave a comment below and let us know how it's going. I'd love to hear about it. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a great day.